Hi, how are you? I forgot to bring my Instagram people in. Give me a minute and let me get them in with us today. Okay. All right. They are my Instagram family is important as well. Welcome to Word of Life Voices. Are you checking in with Mama Wade for better health, better me? That's what it's all about. Better health, better me. You can reach me at www.jolindaway.com if you want to send a message or if you want to, um, you know, ask to probably be on my show. Um, just send me something through my my uh, website. You can also um, catch me on Instagram and also my new channel, www. I mean, YouTube. Um, check in is the letter in not i n check in with mama wade you can also uh go back and look at the messages and the teachings that uh, i bring forth every tuesday and wednesday uh you know this is men's month and we're still honoring it so next week uh matter of fact tomorrow i have a guest on we're going to speak more about um the health issues that um that do come across uh, all of us, but we're directing it toward men this month. And it was my previous guest, uh, Reverend Edward Jones Sr. have agreed to come back on again uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, next Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm having two other special guests that will be in here. Uh, Tuesday, June the 28th, uh, I will have uh, Dwayne Wade Sr. Uh, he will come in and he's going to speak something powerful to you all concerning your health. And then I'm going to have on April 29th, my very own son, Antonio Stroger Sr., another senior that's going to come. And he's going to speak to us also uh, about the better health, better me. And like I said, it's, it's specifically pointing toward men but it's also for all of us that will listen, okay? All right, and when it comes to our children, it's time that we take this information and we be able to share it with them now or get it started now so that they would not um, have some of the problems and issues that we have or we have been having, okay? All right, so I start off with this question. Can these bones live? That was a question that was asked in uh, one of the stories of the Bible. Uh, actually, it was the book of Ezekiel. When God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live, right? And uh, Ezekiel didn't want to say no, because if he said no, then it would have doubted who God was. And he didn't want to say yes, because he figured like, if I say yes, and this thing don't happen. So he went middle ground and he said, well, you know, <laughs> you know, you know. So what God did, God put him to work. Now, God could have did it all on his own, but he put him to work. He gave him something to do, correct? So he said, prophesy to them bones. I'm talking about these bones was deteriorated. It was no flesh on the bones left. They had been there a while they, from a battle that had ensued. So it just it, it looked it hopeless. It looked like what wasn't, wasn't anything going to be happen, right? So... What he did, though, he did what God asked him to do. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. He did what God asked him to do. Whether he believed that that could happen or not, he did what he had, what he was asked to do. God would ask us to do something. All he wants us to do is just do it because he want to get out of the place of just believing in him. He wants us to get to the place where we know him. You see, it's, it's a difference between believing and knowing. He wants you to know him. So, yeah, can these bones live? And once Ezekiel starts speaking to them bones, to his amazement, them th bones start coming together. Tissues and, and ligaments and, 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 and everything that was this, that, that would make up a form of a human. He saw this with his own eyes. He saw the restoration of it. He saw the rejuvenating. He saw it all. But the bone still, even though it was in that human form, it still was lying there. It was together, but it was lifeless. So he gave him another assignment. Now I want you to speak breath into them bones. And when he spoke breath into them bones, oh my God, the story says that the, they came alive and they came to be called one of the greatest army. 
that was put together. What am I saying? We have so many illnesses, so many disease, so many different things that come and attack our bodies. And when you think about bones and you think about the story, then you know it's about death. Things that bring death to our bodies, decisions that we make that bring death to our body, things that happen uncontrollably in our lives that bring death to our bodies. And the question is, the question is asked, can you live? Huh? Can you live? Yes, when you do something about it. That's why better health, better me have been birthed to give you information where you can be able to do something about it. Yeah, he gave him the assignment. Sure, God can do it, but he gave him something to do. Remember, he don't just want you to believe in him. He wants you to know him. Know that I. Ah, glory, glory, glory. See, when the bones start living, or when you start living, you get restored. Hmm. You you get you get you 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 get resusc resuscitated. Yeah. You get rejuvenated. Yeah. You able to revive. Yeah. That's what God wants you to do. It's a promise out there. I, I come to do something. I, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. I done told you from the mouth of King David that you are fearfully and you're wonderfully made. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I'm praying, I'm hoping that you would take the information that you receive here on better health, better me, and that you will use it to resuscitate yourself, to resuscitate your family, that you will use it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Instagram, it seemed like a call. I always wanna come in when I'm with you. <laughs> so I'm sorry, and here we go again. Okay, okay, here go the freezing and everything. Oh my God. Listen, Instagram, do you mind if I go out and come back in? I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Let me know. Am I breaking up with you all on Instagram? Just let me know. Am I breaking up? Hit me and let me know. So what we have to do is to do something about it. So today I want to talk about the enemy that's trapped within. Something is trapped within our, something is trapped within our lives that is killing us, is robbing us of the promised life that we were supposed to get. Just still hoping we could talk on Instagram. Technical difficulties. Okay, yeah. All right. Thank you, Limitless 52. Apparently, I'm having technical difficulties with Instagram. Instagram, please. I'm on YouTube. You can always go to check in the letter in with Mama Wade. What I'm going to get ready to do, YouTube, I mean, Instagram, is to come out and I'm going to come back in. And you guys can get back on if you want to. This happened last week, and I have no idea why it keeps happening. In now. Share. Share. Okay, I'm going to get ready to go back in. Please forgive me, my Facebook family, but they are important also. They are important also. So let's try to do this again. Let's try to do this again. Prayfully, a call won't come in and disconnect. All right, so Instagram, when you come back on, I'm going to definitely be in. But like I said, you can get the duration of it when you go to my YouTube channel, check in with Mama Wade. Every teaching that I do here is very important. And since you know that there is an enemy that's trapped within, then I want you to know what that enemy is. And I'm going to give you some solutions. I'm going to give you some, some, some information that you would be able to do something about it. You would be able to, you would be able to speak life into your whole family. Uh, and to your very existence. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is called indoor air pollution. Indoor air pollution. Yes, it's trapped right there in your home. It's what's killing you is right there in your home. Oh, hallelujah. 
but we're going to make sure that whatever I say here today, we're going to make sure that it will help you so that your bones can live. Your bones can live. According to the EPA, the Environment Protection Agency, almost 11,500 people will be killed this year by indoor pollution. Can you believe that? 11,500 people will be killed this year by indoor pollution. When indoor, that, 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 that's our home. That's the place where we go and we want our solitude. That's the place where we go when we, we go. As a matter of fact, that's the place where we sleep at. That's the place where we eat at. That's the place where we laugh at, we cry at, we lay back, we watch our TV, we play our game. That's our, that's our, our bunker. A home. And there is danger in your home. We have been exposed to an increasing number of chemicals in our air, in our food, and in our water. We've been exposed to that. Not because it's our fault, but that don't stop that the exposure still comes upon us, correct? And there is nothing natural or no natural mechanism in place to eliminate these toxins that's in the air, that's in our food, and that's in our water. Stay with me. These chemicals, these toxins, they wind up in our body tissue. The air you're breathing in your own home can be toxic for you, can can show itself in your body tissue. And sometimes you wonder why you don't feel well. Have you ever just, you know, I mean, just all of a sudden just say, you know what, I just don't feel good today. I don't know what's going on. It's something trapped within your home. So Better Health, Better Me is here to educate you so that you can prevent those poisons from entering your bodies and doing their damage because they got a work to do and it's to destroy. They do what they supposed to do also within our bodies. A lot of times also you need to know that there are many doctors that's also unaware of the hazards that these that accompany these uh, uh, these chemicals and uh, that accompany these new materials that have been created in the past 35 years. A lot of them, they unaware of it too. It's trapped probably in their homes as well. Come on now. Some of this ignorance is driven by profit. Some of them driven by profit. They don't want you to know because if you find out the truth and find out how to eliminate it, somebody finna lose something. Huh? Correct? Some in the industry want to prevent us from knowing the truth about the damage they are doing to our health. It's a secret. A lot of times when they started, uh, when you go and you, you get off into certain jobs, they have you to sign a contract before you even start working. They throw that good money at you, but they have you to sign that contract saying that you're not going to reveal the things that you're learning right there in that company that you're working for. You're not going to reveal that we're killing these people. And you signed it. You signed it because of the money. See, you see the dollar sign because of the money. You know, I, I, I need this money. And then if you do, once you get um, uh, misused up in there or something come up and then you or, or you get fired or you get laid off. Now you want to tell. Huh? Now you want to tell, but you can't because you remember you was on a contract. And once you break it, then there's a lawsuit that's going to be on you. So watch your integrity when you're going and applying for a job or if you're in a certain job. Watch your integrity. Your integrity means everything. Huh? Is that dollar sign worth me killing the world and not letting these people know that there's danger in these health products? Huh, that these things are doing damage to our health. 
Your integrity got to stand, man. High glory. And other information may be locked up for years in product testing. So we won't find out because they're still testing to see what is this top chemical doing to the human body. They're testing it on animals or they're testing it one way or another, but they they're it's on a test. So a lot of times we don't know. What am I saying? These products, these toxins, these chemicals are released in our home. I have a beautiful home here. And once I took this particular study, I said, oh, oh I, got, I got to get some more stuff to arm my house for better health, better me. I have to do something. Modern civilization has put convenience first and health second. But with an ever growing number of unexplainable symptoms that's arising, people now are starting to notice and are asking questions. But I ain't do nothing. What, 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 what brought this on? I was sitting on my couch. So a lot of times they'll give you an antibiotic Oh my God, they'll give you antibody quick. Or they give you a pain medication. They give you something because they don't know what it is. And what do you do? You take it and you start using it. And you don't even know why you're using it because you don't take time to ask. If you can't tell me what this thing is, how can you medicate it? Hmm? Talking to somebody. How can you allow them to medicate it? No, thank you. I don't want that because you don't you don't even know what it is. Come on now. More than four million new chemicals have been created since 1915. That's an eye opener right there. It's letting you know it's some stuff out there. You hear me, family? It's some stuff out there that we go to the store and we bring it our homes and it's killing us. It's killing us. <sighs> Some studies have implicated the indoor environment, indoor environment, listen to this here, as being the primary factor in your home, being the primary factor in the high prevalence of cancer, heart problems, and asthma. In our homes, we, we pick up these things. A lot of times they'll say, well, you know, it run in my family. Man, get away from that all the time. Maybe your family was infected and they didn't know. So let's find out why is that thing now deciding that it want to come in my home. It want to attack my body because, you know, your body is your home. Your body is your temple. And it's very important how you clean your temple. It's very important what you do with it. Some people clean their house, physical house, before they clean their physical house. You know what I'm saying? They put more money into it. And when it comes to putting things or taking things up out of the home, they have a problem with it. I said it. I said it. I said, what you saving for? I'm saving for that car. I'm saving. Oh, I seen the best dining. Oh, I seen, girl, look, I, I'm, I'm spending all, you know, I'm spending my money. I'm, I'm, I'm in credit. I'm in debt, rather. I'm in debt because I'm trying to get everything I know to beautify my home. And what about this home? So how about we learn how to make that home, that house home, safe for you? And that might mean sacrificing some stuff, getting rid of some stuff, and bringing some stuff in. Let me go ahead because I, I only got a certain amount of time, and I want to stay true to my time, and I want to get this information out here to you. <sighs> Question. Could these chemicals that surround us, especially those within our environment, be causing problems or at least aggravating existing ones? That's a question you ask yourself. Huh. We are now discovering that the health hazards of combining drugs. It's a health hazard of combining drugs in your body. 
take this, take this, take that. My 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 physician gave me a a, a pill. It was actually an antibiotic pill. And I'm one, I'm a reader. So I know that this paper is in my bag for a reason. Now, they're not going to tell me everything, but once again, it's up to me to go home, pull out that, 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 uh, that, that instruction and read everything from the warning to precaution to everything that's on there. I know my body better than anybody. And once I read it, I was like, oh, no, no, no. One pill. One pill. This is how powerful this antibiotic is. One antibiotic pill could have sent me into a mental place. And then they say this place you can't even come back from. You can't even reverse it. Get out of here. Could have did more harm to my liver. And I told you I already have a liver thing going on. Could have did something to the kidney. But if I had just took that pill and not read the information, then this temple right here it would be going through something. I would, I could get something that I can't get away from. So read. When you get this medication, read the paper that they give to you in that bag or ask the pharmacist questions. You need to know. Combining these drugs bring about health hazards. So we ask the question again. So can mixtures of chemicals also cause harmful reactions that affect our health? Huh? <laughs> That's a question. Can it? If we know combining drugs can affect our health, what about combining chemicals? And don't tell me that a lot of you, if you hadn't done it, that or you're still doing it, just because you want the house to smell a certain way, you put a two two types of stuff in your water, or you go and you have a, a chemical going on, I'm gonna clean the front with this and I'm gonna clean the kitchen with this. And so, but you still have a chemical, a chemical combustion going on in your home because you mix in these chemicals together and you are inhaling them while you sit and read your book, while you sit and eat your dinner. While you're watching TV, you're inhaling them. So it's going to be a problem for the bones to live if we don't grab a hole and do something about it. See, we have to stand on the fact that, hey, I got it wrong. I need help. I, I'm going to get rid of this so that I can bring in that. Uh, let me get on with it. Let me get on with it. Let me get on with it. You matter. You matter because trust me, Mama Way would not have been up sitting before you doing this assignment that God gave me to do if you didn't matter. Somebody said to me, better help, better me. It's like God is using that to resurrect the land. I said, shut up because it jumped in my spirit and it stuck. Because isn't that what it's about? Isn't that what happened with the bones? They was resurrected, man. That can happen with us. We could be resurrected. I told take you some D3. How many of you did it? Some of you probably still haven't done it. Or you get started and then you stop. Take you serious. Take you serious. I had to take my glasses off of that. <laughs> Woo! So let's go on with it. So I want to show you the following statistical information to encourage you to ask questions about your own health and its relation to air and water quality. OK, number one. One statistic, indoor air quality has been receiving attention since people began to assemble in buildings. Hmm. When you go to work, you ain't the only one up in there. When you're giving these parties, you ain't the only one up in there. When you're going to the store, you ain't the only one up in there. Even in your home, when you're bringing others in, you're not the only one up in there. So we know now that the indoor air quality have been receiving attention since this thing happened. Benjamin Franklin said, no common air from without 
is so unwholesome as the air within a closed room that has been breathed and not changed. But I thought that was so powerful. I don't know, but I, I hope you caught that. That means people coming in your home, you in your home, you breathing, but you don't have nothing, no, nothing to be able to combat the germs and the toxins and all of these things that have been released. Even when you go outside and you come back in, you bring it in something with you. It's an unwholesome place is what he's saying. But we look forward to be outside. That's what you, you, you get your pollution from outside. Baby, you get more from inside your own house. It's all trapped within. It's trapped within. Coming to take you down. To be aware. And use your awareness is wisdom. Number two, the Consumer Federation of America cites indoor air pollution as a major health problem responded, responsible for up to 50% of all illnesses in the United States each year. These are respectable companies that I'm saying before you. 50% of all illness in the United States of America, because most major health problems happen within, makes it hard for the bones to live, make it hard for the bones to be restored, make it hard for you to be revived, make you hard for you to be rejuvenated, make, you, make it hard for you to even be resuscitated. Mm. Number three statistic, the EPA found that indoor sources might expose homes to levels of toxins, air, toxic air polluted to 10 times that of outdoor air. Are you kidding me? 10 times that of outdoor air right here in my house. Look around your beautiful house. Trust me, it's trapped in there. Trust me, it's trapped in there. Hmm. Number four, the American Medical Association reports a 45% higher incidence of respiratory infection among those of the older homes and buildings. So yeah, when you move into an older home or if you in one, then you can call and have them to come out and do a test and they'll be able to tell what's, if your house have a high grade of pollutant in it. Especially if you're in an older building. Come on, that if you're old. Some stuff done leaked and some stuff done seeped and people done came in and probably lived there before you. Ain't no telling what they done released up in there. The energy that's all up in that place. You need to get rid of it. It's toxic and it's killing you. And you wonder where the respiratory problem came from. Talking to somebody. Because you matter. You matter to God and you matter to me. The last statistic. The Board of Environmental Studies and Tox Toxology of the National Resource Council, they estimate that 15% of the population experiences hypersensitivity to chemicals found in common household products. Don't be letting people come around there spraying all that stuff. Y'all don't be going in the store getting all that stuff. Talking, oh, this, 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 because this smells good. Have you really read all of the ingredients that's in that thing that you spraying around the house? Question: Have you read it? And if you don't understand it, have you took time to sit down and Google it to find out what you're really spraying in your house that your pets are breathing in, that your children are breathing in, that you're breathing in, your spouse is breathing in? Have you really checked it out because you want a good smell around the crib, around the house? It's killing you. Please understand that not my, that 
It is not my position to claim that any pollutant is the cause of any symptom. All right. These toxins may aggravate a given condition or uh, it will contrib contribute to overall health problems in chemically sensitive people over time. There are people out there who cannot tolerate your cologne. They can't tolerate your perfume. They go through a thing to the point where it can kill them because they hypersensitive people hypersensitive people. So that's, we got to be very careful. It's nothing wrong with asking, do my perfume bother you? Do my cologne bother you? Or you know what? Thank you for inviting me, but I'm really going to have to leave. I'm a very hyper, hypersensitive individual to chemicals. And this would bring on a respiratory uh, attack or bring out my asthma or something horrible would happen if I stay up in here. And it's okay to find you some open air space because in that environment there, what's trapped within is dangerous to you. It's killing you. You don't have to be there just to be there. I can't be there. And people know when they come to your home, they don't wear cologne. They don't wear perfume. You don't even have to let it in the door. It's up to you how sociable you want to be, but it's also about respect. Huh? Respect my space, respect my place. Whew. Okay. Okay. So the suggestions that I'm going to share with you today are not cures, but they are here for you to learn ways of reducing the toxins in your environment. If we only can reduce it, we're safer than we was when we didn't make an effort. Right? So here's a few precautions that a few precautions can go far in making indoor air healthier to breathe. Somebody right now, uh, you know how important breath is. You remember the story I told you that he told Ezekiel, now breathe. They were just laying there. Now breathe. Because we know how precious breath is. We know that breath comes from God. Mm. But you want to watch what you You want to be careful what you're breathing in Okay, let me go, let me go, let me go Alright, because I want to finish this Some of these tips that I'm going to give you Is simply common sense Some of them are common sense Make sure your stoves your heaters and your fireplaces are properly vented. Your stove, which is in your home. Your heaters, which is in your home and your fireplace, not just vented, but are they vented properly? You can have someone that you know is uh, efficient in that area to come and to at least check and say, hey, is this set? Is this venting properly? Is, how is my stove? Is my stove seeping any type of gas? Is it you, any carbon monoxide going on here in the house? What about my heater? Check my fireplace. Once again, you got to do something about it. Try to always use exhaust fans if you cook with gas. Say that again. Try to always use exhaust fan, exhaust fans if you cook with gas. If your house has an attached garage, this common sense stuff, never idle the car while it's inside. Hmm. And occasionally clean your air conditioning and your heating filters to help prevent mold growth. And I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a teaching on mold. Gonna blow your mind to remove dampness. Install a dehumidifier and ventilation fans. I hope you got that. Remember, you can go to check in with Mama Wade on my YouTube and being just the letter N, and you can hear this all over again. So, are your stove heaters and fireplace vented properly? Hmm. Okay, let's go. 
Research has found some unexpected sources of potential indoor pollution. Some of the most surprising are, this gas me, y'all, this gas me, so I know it might gas you. Dishwashers, washing machines, and showers, appliances and fixtures that heat and spray water can strip chemicals out of the water, releasing them into the air to be inhaled. What? I take my shower, I get on out of there, baby, and I pat on off, huh? not knowing what them just been released into the air. Woo, there's some good stuff. If it ain't good to you, it's good to me. It's good to me. Can my bones live? Yes, because I speak to it. Listen to this. These contaminants include toxic chemicals that form when chlorine is added to water supplies or in the water in a washing machine. They also include pollutants that sometimes shows up in water, such as benzene and, and naturally occurring radon. And listen to this. Both of these things are known to cause cancer. If from my washing machine, Mama Wade, it's in the water. It's in the water. Now, God didn't mean for water to be contaminated. But we know mankind have contaminated the whole earth. But we have to do something to combat it. And I'm telling you, when you get knowledge and you get understanding with it, that's when you can apply the wisdom and move in that direction. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead because I want to finish this before my time is up. Hmm. In, exper in exper experiments conducted in 1999 by Richard Corsi, who was an associate professor of civil engineering at the University of Texas, he found that dishwater dishwashers were the worst offenders in releasing chemicals from water to indoor air. What do you mean? Well, what do we do about it? Just say with me, I'm gonna give you his advice. This is Corsi's advice. Wait until the dishwasher has completely cooled down before you open it. That means when it stops, don't just pull it open. Let it cool down, okay? And always turn on the exhaust fan or open a window before, during, and for 10 to 20 minutes after you take a bath or shower. Better help, better me. To be aware is to be wise. I'm just sweating. <laughs> Cleaning indoor air. I'm going to finish this. We will discuss ways currently used to clean and exchange the indoor air. The best way of reducing the effects of indoor air pollution is to never install toxic materials in a building in the first place. When you're having your place built, or you might be having a home bill or something in your house bill, then you go and make sure that them chemicals that's being used are not toxic. You can ask questions before you even buy these things out of a store. You can Google. We are in the world of information. Well, you can find out. But if they are already in place because somebody done built a house and have made sure that you got all this stuff that's in the house before you move into the house, the only solution other than removal is to install a heat recovery ventilator to remove polluted air and install an air cleaner to capture these pollutants. Let me go on, let me go on. Heat recovery ventilators, you heard me say that. Adequate ventilation is critical for all types of housing. 
All homes have some openings that leak cold air into and heated air out of the home. So to reduce the energy costs that these leaks cause, we identify areas to seal against air leakage and so it is trapped. The air quality of the house also depends on the number and severity of the pollution sources in the house and how fast the pollutants are being removed. An air type house can have acceptable indoor air quality if it contains no major pollution sources. And a drafty house can have a poor air quality if many sources of pollutants are present. An air to air heat exchanger is a heat recovery ventilator. The, uh, the acronyms is HRV. This device, it would pull the stale, warm air from a house and transfer the heat in that air to fresh, cold air that's being pulled into the house. Now, the heat recovery ventilator do not produce heat, okay? They only exchange the heat from one airstream to another, making it comfortable for my bones to live. Efficient models can recover as much as 80% of the heat in the stale air. Efficient models. Heat recovery ventilators benefit homes because they, let me tell you five reasons why. It's a good idea to get you one. They provide good air quality year round. They control when and where outdoor air enters the building. They distribute fresh air to the rooms. They introduce out, outdoor air in ways that avoid drafts and preserve comfort. And they give an occupant the ability to remove stale air from all habitable rooms. So that heat recovery ventilator, it's something you need to write down and go and check it out. The last one, I told you I was gonna get through it. Ooh, I love the Lord. Air filtration, let's talk about it. Air filtration. There's no way to completely keep, listen to this, airborne dust, tobacco, tobacco, smoke, and pollen particles out of your home. There's no way to keep to completely keep these airborne toxins out of your home. All can originate indoors, especially tobacco, or can be carried in with normal activity. Just somebody coming over to visit you. They bring that stuff right on in with them. Clothes, shoes, it's on them. They bring that toxin, that chemical right in your house. And like Benjamin said, Benjamin Franklin said, an unwholesome home is a home. Mm. All can originate indoors, especially tobacco, or can be carried in with normal activity. These particles will settle eventually, but an air cleaner removes them while they are airborne. This reducing the concentration in the air and preventing their buildup. Air pollutants fall into two categories. One, the off-gassing of organic chemicals. Two, pesticides and particulate such as pollen, dust, mold, and dander. Now, air, fil air filters can be an integral part of forced hot air heating system, but they may not be effective in eliminating all indoor pollutants. They are almost always incorporated into the heat recovery ventilator where they have a better removal rate than in the furnace system. 
And to be sure your efforts are being effective, purchase an air filtration device that is suited to the contaminants that you wish to remove. You know what contaminants is in your home. So you know what you're looking for. Right back now, as you see, it goes right back to you. Putting in the footwork, doing what needs to be done. Hey, go on my YouTube, check in with Mama Wade and subscribe while you're there. And get this information again, because I know you can't grab it in this hour. You can't grab everything I just gave you in this hour. But it's this is beneficial. This is life saving. This is resurrection for somebody. Now, look at this here. Well, before I seal it with that, let me say this here. Some of you might say, I can't afford that type of stuff. I'm barely getting by. I remember when we were coming up and times was hard for my mama too. And I'm quite sure when my mama was coming up, times was hard for her mama and them too. I remember that. And they had in place what they call layaway. Now, I don't know if they still have it, but I know it was beneficial for my mom to be able to get the things that we needed. She put it on layaway. Now, you can check out and see if they're a layaway plan. Or, as I show on the screen, look for sales. Become a couponer. Look for them coupons. Don't throw that stuff away. Look for coupons. Do whatever is necessary to help yourself. Whatever is necessary to make you get by. And one of the best air filters that we can have, and you might see it behind me, House plants. House plants are nature's air filters. Oh, listen to me. They, this thing right here, is breathing in carbon dioxide and is breathing out oxygen for me. It's breathing all that carbon dioxide, that poison, and it's releasing oxygen. And I'm breathing in the oxygen and I'm letting out the carbon dioxide and it's catching it. Mm. Some plants, and you go to a plant store, you can ask them about it. Some plants are nature's air filters. Some plants thrive on the very chemicals, and I like this, that are poisonous to humans. And you see what I put up there. House plants are powerful. It's God's natural way to help us live. So invest in you with some plants. If it's one at a time, talk to the people about it. Tell them what, what you know. Well, you know what? I just seen a program on, on Check In with Mama Wade, and uh, she was saying, I need to look for something that I know that comes in my house. Your kids might, somebody might have some children or, or, or a spouse or you might be a weed smoker. Would you think it's no chemicals coming off of that? It's not pure weed. Spray with some, some, some type of pesticide, something to hold it. And when they smoke it, that's allowed too. They bring it in the crib with them. They done brought the toxins in with them. And you sitting up there, whoo, man, I feel like I'm getting a contact. <laughs> contact sick. Watch out. Them chemicals are dangerous. They can get within your body tissue and they can do reputable harm to you. Where a lot of it, you won't come back from. I pray that this has helped somebody. Like I said, if you're interested in being a part of my show and tell me what you can bring to my show, then you can hit my webpage, www.jolindaway.com. I am looking for a, uh, a psychologist, somebody who deals in mental illness, because better health, better me is about the whole person. It's about the soul of a man. And what's the soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotion. 
It's about the physical body of a man and it's about the spirit of a man. So better health, better me feeds them all. And we want to talk about it. Hmm? If you're a person and you're in finance. And we know how debt and all that type of stuff, we know how it can send you off. It can mess up your mind. Stress. We need to come and better help better me is going to bring you some programs, some information, some people that's going to help you to be able to get rid of that major killer. And that thing called stress. And unidentified stress because you won't accept it is the worst one, because once your body's stressed, it have now just released some toxins. Some free radical some agents to do what they want to do in your holy temple. That every time your bones try to live, every time restoration come, something come against it. So it's more than just taking a walk. huh? It's more than just eating and eating portion. We have to bring the whole together. What do you feed your mind? What are you watching on TV? Huh? What are you, what are you, what are you, it's 24 hours we have been blessed with. What are you doing with the majority of them hours? What are you putting in that amazing mind of yours? Somebody said you are what you eat. You think you can't, we're not talking always about physical eating. We're talking about what you put in your mind. Who you follow? That's a good question. Who do you follow that you say amen to all the time? And yeah, they right. Then you are that. Because that's what you are receiving. And you have you ever went off because you couldn't, you missed them? Sound like some type of addiction going on there to me. I got to, I got to have them. I got you ain't got to have nobody but God. Now I ask you again. Can your bones live? Hmm? Can your bones live? I don't know why it's got me looking like I'm from the side. I used to have it all set up cool, but it looked like I'm looking a different direction. I get it together. Can your bones live? Do you want to be restored? Do you want to be revived? Yes. Do you want to be resuscitated? Do you want to be rejuvenated? Clean out what's within that's harmful to you. Take this information and use it for your better health, better me, for the glory of God. So tune back in with me tomorrow where my guest once again will be Reverend Dr. L. Ed Edward Jones Sr. of Now is the Time Ministry of Faith, who I told you was a doctor over 60 something years and is very, very knowledgeable, very wise. And then next week, next Tuesday and next Wednesday, I'm having some more guests come in. And it's going to be uh, Dwayne Wade Sr. going to come on Tuesday. You want to you want to you want to get in there and it's going to be talking about prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah, it hit him, but he got some information for you. And then on the 29th, which is that Wednesday, because we know that the spirit man's need to be strengthened as well. I have my son, some of you all may know him, Antonio Stroger Sr. Some of you might know him as a graphic artist, bishop, prophet. But he's simply a, a man that's usable by God that wants to come on and be able to talk with us in our mental place, in our spiritual place. And I can't find no other, I couldn't think of no other way to end the month of June on that note with that brother there. And July, I got a line up in July that's gonna be crazy and powering. Also, if you work for an insurance company, hit me. And I want to talk to you, too, because we need to talk to them about insurance. Oh, it's so many topics that <laughs> I got up under my belt. I can't call them all. But I do. I want to be a psychologist. If 
you work for an insurance company, and if you're in the financial field where we can talk about what debt do to an individual. And next month, I'm going to have a show on bullying. A major, major killer, a major, major stressor that happens to our children when we release them. And not only that, you got some that grow up being bullies. So they become grown bullies and they bully you on your job or they bully you with this and that. Some people climb the ladder just to be a bully. We're going to talk about bullying and what bullying really do. So you have sat now with Mama Wade. Remember, my ministry is Word of Life Voices. Better health better me. Where the word that you hear will speak life into your very existence. So I'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific time, right here. Go to my YouTube channel, and some of you went and did it, and I thank you. I don't know who it was, but I thank you. And subscribe. You follow me. Oh, that's some good stuff. Subscribe and tell your friend to subscribe. Mama Wade working on something. All right. Bless you. Have a good day. Da, 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 da. Bum, bum, bum.